गुड मॉर्निंग ताओ ओवर फ्लूज एग्जिस्टेंस वर्क्स मिस्टीरियसली फॉर द बर्थ ऑफ अ न्यू कॉन्शियसनेस एंड मीटिंग ऑफ द सीकर विद द मास्टर अ सीकर टोल्ड दैट फ्रॉम द वेरी बिगनिंग हर लाइफ वॉज डेडिकेटेड टू इनर ग्रोथ बट बींग ब्रॉट अप in a western environment things were very difficult during her teens whenever she mentioned of these visions to anyone it was considered as madness during her teens once she had a vision that she was in a forest in search of her master there she saw a man standing with a grey beard pulled towards the person mysteriously she inquired his name in response the hoary headed person told his name as tau this surprised her as the person looked indian in his appearances but told his name as tau her search continued during this period she was taken care of mysteriously many other visions happened much later this vision attained fruition in the first meeting the recognition happened at every stage her life was guided mysteriously until she met her master who in the first meeting recognized her this is how mysteriously the existence takes care of the seekers who are chosen to carry on the work along the path of spiritual development sufis say the master appears the moment disciple is ready all these visions circumstances and situations are meant for the preparation of the seeker how the birth takes place at the age when tau was only 8 months old sufi sheikh brij mohan lal transferred the secret of the golden flower or the mind seal of a buddha onto tau from 1951 until 55 he remained under the spiritual care of the nakshbandi sheikh brij mohan lal it was during this period every night he slept with him and participated in various stages of meditation and techniques for the transformation of human consciousness it was all in preparation for the future book and these things were planted in the subconscious so when the seed from the subconscious blossoms it grows into a tree that is capable of sheltering millions for this sheikh brijmohan lal made forecast long before it was there the inward journey continued this infused everything into unconscious layers to surface as the inward journey continued and when once she asked his grandmother complain complaining that nobody tells him to do anything she responded that the sheikh has given everything it will blossom when the time comes after 1955 i was put under the care of nakshbandi masters sufi shakuntala devi and 
Sheikh Onkar Nath and others. In the company surfaced all that was infused in the subconscious to surface. The company of these masters proved as catalyst. Master is a catalyst, he does nothing, but in his presence everything happens. Not only these masters, other masters were equally instrumental in training with who I got intimate communion. Also this process continues. Such is the situation with anyone who aspires for life of awakening. Remember, one who is the seeker today will blossom as awakened one once the proper environment is created for the growth and development. If you look at your own life, you will find mysteriously you are being taken care of at each step. Another seeker, Professor Abdulwani, told me he was in search of a master. Remember Sufis say, the moment disciple is ready, master appears mysteriously, or you are directed to the master in a unique way through existential search engine of trust and intuition. In his search, Abdul Ghani was drawn to Hazrat Jalaluddin Rumi. He went to his shrine in Konya. There someone told him to hold the tomb-like hat that Mevlavi students use in his hand and present him in front of the Sheikh Jalaluddin Rumi's shrine for guidance in search of the Master. This is true. We trust when you do something like this, the, the guidance comes and your search will complete as you finish the meditation at the shrine. He was ready for the final meeting. After meditation, as he came out of the shrine, a white woman with red hair appeared approached Abdul Ghani. She said, I do not know, but I have a strong feeling to tell you something. You must go to Sheikh Muhammad Nazim Adil al-Hakini, Naqshbandi, a master of the Naqshbandi Hakini Tariqat from Cyprus. Professor Ghani was very erudite, pious, and sincere in his approach. Seeing his sincerity and piety, many of his students from various universities in Europe, America, and United Kingdom were drawn to the path. I was told this by Asif Dhar, that once he told Professor Ghani about the book, tasavvur e Sheikh, that he carried with him during his visit to New York. Asif told Abdul Ghani that he will lend him the book to read while he is in New York. Abdul Ghani finished the entire book in one sitting. Such was his dedication for inner growth. In his etiquette, he was unparalleled. Whenever I entered the meditation place, even if he was sitting, he would stand up and will sit only after I sat down. He was quite he was then in his eighties. Another seeker from Sweden, Lars told a similar story of his visit to the shrine of Hazrat Jalaluddin Rumi. That's why Jalaluddin Rumi, although he belongs to Mevlavi tradition, but he comes, he stands as the guide for anyone, irrespective of the path or tariqat. 
he is that master who guides like the khizr alay salam he guides every seeker along the path or the hindu wandering sage narad who guides every seeker irrespective of his path or so that's why i was in drawn to hazrat jalaluddin rumi and in some of the books i use the books use the quotes from masnavi at the beginning of each chapter <clears throat> This story is from Lars from Sweden who told me this story about his visit to the shrine of Jalaluddin Rumi and how he met his master he came to know of Tao <coughs> so he decided to send him a letter with an intention to see if Tao is authentic he thought he will respond to the mail and there is nothing wrong in writing a letter no sooner the letter was received it was responded in a matter lars could not believe another person complained why did you leave me uncared for so long and why did you take so long i have been waiting for this kind of intimacy for a very long time not only in this life long before even in the previous one you need to trust the energy that flows within i have many a times mentioned there is a power within that knows beyond our knowings we are not aliens nor as a strangers to join we are bound to each other by a causeless force this causeless force works in a mysterious way you need to trust this and flow that flows within this energy represents existence and guides you during such moments but in a very low audible voice you have to listen to this voice in the silence within remember this power this energy within that knows beyond our knowings always guides once you trust your intuition your path will be clear i recall an incident once shake onkar nath arranged for a trip to the shrine of shake abul hasan nasirabadi the shake who predicted the advent of lala ji and chacha ji 100 years ago a bus trip was arranged the shrine was very unknown in a remote corner and unrecognized the sheikh told me to go ahead of the entire group and locate the shrine a doubt came to my mind how will i recognize the shrine i am not i do not understand the urdu language even the same moment it dawned trust your inner energy when the sheikh has told you to go and locate the shrine you are simply an instrument and i reached the shrine where a small epitaph read the identification in urdu language as parents and master it is our responsibility to create a suitable environment both for inner and outer as subtle presence enough for today